Hey kids, there were more than a million people traveling through the wilderness led by Moses. So this story tells us how God fed and looked after all of their needs by providing man in the wilderness, water to drink, and protection from their enemies. Now the children of Israel set out from Elam, and they came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And the whole congregation of the sons of Israel crumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, saying, It would have been better if we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. So Moses and Aaron said to the people, You will see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your grumblings against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but they are against the Lord. So it came about as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the sons of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall have meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it came about at evening that quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the layer of dew evaporated, behold, on the surface of the wilderness, there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as a frost on the ground. And when the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather as much as he should eat. He shall take an omer apiece, according to the number of people each of you has in his tent. So the sons of Israel did so. And some gathered much, and some gathered little. But when they measured it with an omer, he who had gathered much had no extra. And he who had gathered little had enough. Every man gathered as much as he should eat. Now Moses said to them, Let no man eat any of it until the morning. But they did not listen to Moses, and some left part of it until the morning. And it bred worms, and it became foul, and it began to stink. And Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat. But when the sun grew hot, it would melt away. Now on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each person. So all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said to them, This is what the Lord meant. Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over put aside to be kept until the morning. So they put it aside until the morning, as Moses had ordered, and it did not become foul, nor were there any worms in it. And Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the fields. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. And it came about on the Sabbath day that some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore he gives you bread for two days on the sixth day. Remain every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel named it Manna. 
And it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. And Moses said, Let an omer full of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread that I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer full of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. So Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. Now the sons of Israel ate the manna for 40 years until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Then the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, according to the command of the Lord, and they camped at Rephidim, and there was no water there for the people to drink. Therefore they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me and test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do to this people? A little more, and they will stone me. So Moses passed before the people and took with him some of the elders of Israel and his staff in his hand with which he struck the Nile and he stood before the rock at Horeb and he struck the rock and water came out of it and the people drank. So Moses did this in the sight of all the elders of Israel. And he named the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the sons of Israel and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Now Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, choose men for us and go out and fight against Amalek. So Joshua did as Moses told him, and he fought against Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came about that when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. Then they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. Thus his hands were steadied until the sun set. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Well, kids, God is providing all that Israel needs to survive this great trip through the wilderness from food and water and protection from their enemies.